We have a great show today, man. This guy came on my show, I think about six years ago. At that time, they were talking about something regarding food preservation and things like that. But this man since then has moved on so far. I just realized that he's won. Uh, the Queen actually awarded him. There's something called the Queen's Young Leaders Awards. And he was actually awarded. And uh, we'll be talking to him. His name is Elijah Amo Ado. And after that, we're talking to this fantastic Ghanaian lady who is a singer, international singer. And she actually did some stuff uh, uh, in New York City. And I'll be telling you more about her. But she is coming. But for now, put your hands together and show some love for the man who presents football, Mr. Elijah Amo Ado. There we go. Thank you so much. Please have a seat and welcome to the show. Well, he's in the house. And later on, Anna will be following. But until then, are we ready with the show? Are we ready? Then fasten your seat belts and see the kids and show. The KSM Show. And we're back, we're back. Thank you so much. And we're here with Elijah. And he is a proud recipient of the Queen Young Leaders Award. Elijah, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you're, you. you're on the show about what, about six years ago? Yes, yes. I was here with a few of my colleagues. That's chefs. right. Chefs. Then I was a bit smallish. <laughs> now, more food than that. Well, in my Ghana, when, when, when you put it, they, they say it's wealth. <laughs> so we are getting wealth here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. So, yeah, and, and since then, by the way, you have an award. We'll talk about other uh, stuff, but uh, this is the Queen, the Queen's Young Leaders Award. Yes. And yes. you were awarded uh, for, your, for your project called Food for All? Yes. yes. I see. So this award is just few people in Ghana that get the opportunity mm -hmm. to have it. So you, the, <laughs> queen, the Queen give it yes. to yourself? I can count Three people, really? three Ghanaians who have had this? Who have had who are, who this. Are who? Uh, Winnie Fred, myself, and then there's this young man who was lucky to have it last two years. Okay. But after our time, there's no more Queen's Young Leader Award. So it's a great privilege. Fantastic. And, yeah, thanks a lot, man. And, and this is for your organization, food, the, the stuff you've been doing with the Food for All. Yes. So Food for All, we are a food recovery organization. Okay. We work with businesses and then farmers to ensure that the excesses we have within the food supply chain mm. actually does not go waste. Okay. Rather, it is connected to those who can't food? afford. Oh. So low income, those vulnerable communities, you can think of the orphanages, mm. you can think of places like James. So you, you, you recover the food from all these outlets which would have normally gone to waste. Yes. And so, you take them to the needy. Yes. So we work with uh, businesses like Quatsons who always have a lot of food that the market is not consuming. So for them not to waste money on storage and then wait for it to expire and dispose mm, it off, they, give it, they out. give it out to us and then okay. we in turn use it to feed those who can't afford it. Okay. There's an interesting story about what inspired you to begin all of this. T tell me about the story. Yes. So uh, the years when I came here on your show, uh, then we were talking about food safety and I was secretary of the Chef Association and working then with Alisa Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, but every morning, there's this mentally challenged man who comes to the restaurant and then come and pick leftovers from our trash bins. When you get to the Nima overhead, you see that a lot of time you meet a lot of mentally challenged mm -hmm. people under mm -hmm. the bridge, mm -hmm. yes. Because mm -hmm. they always get food from this mentally challenged really? man. So he goes around hotels and restaurants, picks leftovers, and then put it in small bags and go and share it to them. But one day I met him at the restaurant early in the morning and I was like, Ah, Bema, I didn't know you were a sister, a granny, a ball, a new one, a coma, a new one, a new one, a new one. Now, he came out and was like, Semanya, why never? And for me, that statement of Semanya, why never? made me realize that mm. there is a problem that mm -hmm. demands solution. Mm -hmm. and being an orphan once, I knew what it means to mm. be on an empty stomach. Mm. So I started Chefs for Change Ghana Foundation, where we connected places like Alisa Hotel to uh, Accra Psychiatric Hospital. So all that we did was just a phone call. 
and at the end of service and then the people from psychiatric hospital comes directly and to the pick hotel up, yeah. pick all that we have in the kitchen that wouldn't be used mm. again too so they always have food then other hotels and restaurants mm, also mm. pick this. It's fantastic, but let, just a quick backup. Uh, the part that he said this, this mentally challenged person was picking up the food and he wanted to find out why. And the person said uh, he uses, he picks up to go and feed other handicapped people. And he asked him, why does he do that? And he says, if I don't do it, who will do it? And that's what triggered something in his mind that even if a handicapped, mentally challenged person realizes that they have a social responsibility then how much more somebody who is like fit so that led you to establish the food for food for africa program mm. so the beginning was just uh which hotel was we started Quasins. with we started with alisa alisa so okay. it was mostly the hotels the restaurants that were giving us their leftovers then my interest and then that of others that also believed in the dream became so much in interesting that I find more joy in feeding them than feeding people who can afford. So with that, we then moved on to those who actually supply us to find out from them, do they actually do get waste? And it was so revealing to know that 45% uh, uh, of food is actually going waste within mm. businesses in Ghana. We went to, I remember a conversation with the Ghana Food and Beverage Association of Ghana, which is the umbrella body for uh, all businesses, mostly supermarkets in Ghana. And their secretary made us understand that their members are losing over 200,000 Ghana cities worth of food on a monthly basis to food waste. Not, these are, they, they believe these are food waste that could be averted if actually there is a centralized system. So what is causing the waste? Like there's too much of it and there's no use? Or what is it? What was, so why, is it, why is it being wasted? One, it has many factors, but most importantly of these factors along the distribution chain, due to inefficiencies within the food supply chain, we have businesses, one, those who are importing, in order to be able to beat importation costs, they import more than the market will demand so that they know that their importation cost becomes less and then the prices of food is at a certain level. But once it enters into the market and the market is not consuming it, then it becomes be burden yeah. because of uh, storage, warehousing fees and all that one. When you come to the farming level to uh, the small older farmers, they produce a lot depending on the market woman to come and buy from them. So if the market woman doesn't come, all that is left on the farm is going waste. So these are the basic mm. inefficiencies that is causing so, the so loss you, of waste. So you decided to take advantage of the waste by the allocating the waste to those who need it? Is yes, so it? for us, we decided to bridge the gap. So before it goes waste, once you know you okay. don't need it, once okay. you know the only option of call is it going to waste mm. just give us a call okay. and wherever it is or send us an email mm. and as the year went by we inculcated mobile technology so we've actually created a mobile application which you as a, an urban dweller can post any excess food you have onto the platform and immediately from the back end will connect someone in need mm. to come for mm. it mm. yeah so, um, so you collect it and then you go and distribute it to the needy. Yes. So who and who are the benefits? Who, so who we do you work, send stuff to now? We work with beneficiaries. Currently, we have across the nation 5,485 beneficiaries, mostly from orphanages like the Osu Children's Home. We have the Osu Buster Home as well. We also work with the Teshi. We work with a lot of orphanages, the Ecropon School for the Blind. We so you convert the food and, and cut the food yes, to them? Yes, please. Fantastic. And then we, we ensure that they have a more of sustain a more sustainable means of nutrition because most of these homes depend on benevolent donation. And we are trying to change that mode of depending on benevolent donation. In some instances, we even give food to schools under the national school feeding program wow. to ensure that. So we made sure that the 
uh, the school were first. We made sure the school had the first national food school feeding program where they had a whole balanced meal in addition with a drink attached to it. And so we support some of these schools under the school feeding program mm. to ensure that they also have a more sustainable and healthy means to mm. nutrition. So, um, yeah, so beautiful, beautiful. And so this is called the Food for All program. Yes. Wow. And um, how did you get the quiz attention? Yes, so when we started, it was very difficult. And at a point, I had to lose my job. I was head chef of a whole restaurant, and my boss gave me the option of choosing my job and then feeding the mentally challenged people. I chose to feed them. So I resigned and focused more on the organization. Mm. So somewhere 2015, every World Food Day, we create a bigger margin where we feed in the 5,000s to mark World Food Day. In 2015, I was able to get a group of young people who believed in their vision. And we decided to break a Guinness World Record for the longest table on UN World Food Day just to create attention, just mm. to make sure that mm. stakeholders and people in Ghana hear mm. what we are doing and mm. then we work together because we say it is a shared social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We couldn't break the record. We had it on the Osuos Force Tree. We couldn't break the record, but we were able to feed 5,000. Wow. And during the event, there was this man who came to witness who are these people saying they want to break a Guinness World Record in Ghana. Mm. And he came and saw a group of young guys so exuberant, so determined that they want to make noise to the world that not that we are way, not that we are not producing enough food, we are producing, but there is a lot going waste. Mm. So mm. he became a friend, not knowing he was working with the Commonwealth. Mm. So as the Queen became 60 years on the throne, she decided she wanted to award young people mm. across the common were doing things that she believes is in direct representation to what the Commonwealth stands for. So it was true there that I was selected as one of the recipients. I thought it was wow. a, a joke. Well, <laughs> the day came, I got to London, I got to Cambridge first to have a course in leading change. And then the day came for us to meet the Queen. I decided I want to go in my chef jacket because I felt that was what has brought mm -hmm, mm -hmm. us there. Uh, amazingly, when it was my turn to receive my award from the Queen, the first thing I heard Her Majesty saying that, hey, you are a chef. And I said, yes, your, your Majesty. So it freezed me up a bit. Then she asked where I was from. I was like, I'm from Ghana. Then she started talking about Dr. Kwame Krumah. So whilst others were also waiting for the hour, close to one there. minute, <laughs> Her Majesty was chatting with me, and everybody at Beckham Palace was going like, what's going on? <laughs> she you know, usually does it. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to a point she was like, oh, she's quite interested in what I do at Food for Her. Mm. So after we... I collected my award and the other recipients. We had a picture session together as a group. And then after the picture session, because I was tall, I was at the back. Then I heard Her Majesty shouting, where is the chef? Where is the chef? Where is the chef? So she met me again after the picture session. And she was like, she's really proud with what I do. And told me that she has hosted President Kufo and the family before in mm. Beckham Palace. Mm. And she asked me if I will cook for her which I said, yes. So she was like, what would I cook? And then out of excitement, and because wache is my favorite food, is wache? I know every wache <laughs> joint in Accra, I say wache. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a chance to make wache for her? Uh, yes, and then also, I was able to work with the team at Beckham Palace. They host a lot of people across the Commonwealth, and most of the times, working to develop recipes to ensure that you feel at home because the common world is more. So how long were you there? I, I was there for about two weeks, came back and then went for a month. When you went back, you went back to the more palace? More of, yes, I went to, to I went, um, I went to work with the team there to work on some recipes and I as Interesting. well. Interesting. Uh, it was also an opportunity for me to meet investors to see how best they could. Put your hands together, man. Put your hands together. So, before I let you go, if there are people watching who have 
is it hotels and other stuff that you go to for excess food? So what? currently, yes, we focus more on businesses, mm. more businesses like supermarkets, okay. manufacturers, importers. As far as we have business within the food supply chain, okay. you could be member of the Food and Beverage Association okay. or not. Okay. Get in touch with us. We know you what, have How do they get in touch with you? That's what I want you, to get. You can contact us www.foodforallafrica.org or 024-722-3821, social media, or even on Google, Google Food for All Africa program, and you will see our uh, details there. Fantastic. Fantastic. So all the information is on your screen, and I think it's a very, 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 very important, uh, a useful thing that you're doing in terms of you reaching out to them to, to share what you consider your waste, and they're delivering it to people who need it. Elijah. Congratulations. Keep it up. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, put it on together one more time for him. Food for all. And stick around. We'll be right back. Don't move, don't blink, don't breathe. The KSM Show will be right back. ASM show.